or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Hannah and on this channel I talk everything books. Everything books. Basically what I do is share with you guys the books that I've been reading, the books that I've loved, the books that I have not loved. I have actually filmed this video, gosh, I think four times. The third time I thought was the charm and then as I was going back in and kind of editing in clips of my real-time thoughts as I was reading the books in past tense, so past past tense I guess, I just realized that it was a whole big mess and <laughs> basically I decided to break it up into two videos. So this is part one of my second quarter wrap-up for 2021. And in second quarter of 2021, I did read actually 16 books. One of them was a DNF, so I guess 15 and a half, whatever you want to claim it as. But today I'm only going to talk to you about the first eight. I'm going to break it up because there are a few books in here where when I finished it, I was not filming a reading vlog, but I did have many, many thoughts that I just knew I wouldn't remember. Oh, fly. That I just knew I, do you see this thing? Get it out of here. You're going down, fly. In the midst of reading them, I just had many thoughts that I knew I wouldn't remember all the way to this wrap up. So I'm gonna share with you guys the first eight books I read and kind of splice into it the extra little clips. So here we go. Oh my gosh, is this fly gonna be here this whole time? This is ridiculous. Okay, we're armed people, we're armed and ready. The first book I read in April of 2021, so second quarter 2021, is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This was my first Kristen Hanna novel. It's about a woman named Elsa who is a mother living in the 1930s, the Great Depression, and she lives actually in Texas. So she's undergoing the entirety of the trials of the Dust Bowl. This book, get out of here, fly. This book was an emotional, emotional roller coaster. This is not a book I would suggest picking up if you're looking for a happy, lighthearted read, but it is definitely extremely moving, extremely powerful, and gives great insight into that period of time in our history. To me, it was an easy five out of five. Again, this is my first Kristen Hanna novel, but it was so powerful, so impactful. You will not walk away the same as you were entering in. So I do look forward to reading more Kristen Hanna novels and I highly recommend you pick this one up if historical fiction is your thing, if moving stories is your thing, if stories about mother-daughter relationships is your thing, all of the things. And I'm also going to enter my clip right about here uh, for my thoughts as I was reading the book. I can already tell this is going to be like a five out of five stars for me. Um, probably one of my favorite books of all time. Honestly, it's an instant classic, in my opinion, for future generations. So, like, I didn't think that a book that was surrounding such hardship and turmoil could feel like a warm hug, but that is the best definition I can give of The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. But from what I understand about her, that's just kind of her brand is writing such beautiful character arcs, writing such beautiful relationships in general that tug at your heartstrings, that make you think of your own life and also feel grateful for the life you do live. And that's how the Four Winds has made me feel. There have been multiple times where I just felt like weeping. I just don't wanna stop reading it even though I know more hard times are coming. <sighs> I just love this book. The next book I read in April, 2021 is The Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. This is my third thriller by Lisa Jewell. There's that dang fly again. I did not get it. This is my third thriller by Lisa Jewell. And this, this book was only okay for me. I'm not gonna give too much of it away because I like to go with into thrillers knowing as little as possible, but basically it's about a girl named Sapphire who goes missing and um, you're following what happened to her and you're following actually three different perspectives throughout, which I always like different, getting different point of views as I'm reading thrillers. I think it's really intriguing, really interesting. 
but unfortunately the end really did fall short for me. Again, I can't put my finger on it. I did listen to the audio, which was very enjoyable. The different uh, actors did really good jobs portraying the different points of view. So overall, it was an interesting read and it's a good one to pass the time, but ultimately it fell short for me. So I ended up giving it three stars. The third book I read in April, 2021 is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm so sorry if it's not. I got this in my book of the month box for January, which I love book of the month. Essentially, this book is an enemies to lovers trope romance, which is one of my favorites. And it follows an Indian girl who works works as a software engineer for a company and does a lot of marketing type of stuff for them. Liam, who is of Irish descent and is a venture capitalist. So he's essentially going out and figuring out what his company should be investing in. And so that portion of it was really intriguing to me. So this is like also a second chance romance since they were friends in high school and did have romantic interests in each other, but ended up falling away because of a misunderstanding. I did give this book three stars while it was enjoyable. I don't feel like I can necessarily recommend it to everyone. I did enjoy the romance portion and um, the cultures that I was reading about. That was really intriguing, you know, reading about how an Indian family approaches uh, dating for their, for their child and then, you know, a family of Irish descent and how they would approach dating with a child. There are a few scenes that you would have to skip over if you're not into the closed, into the, excuse me, into the open door romance. Overall, it was a good storyline, but again, I wouldn't feel like I could necessarily recommend it to everyone. And then I was just on a roll with romances because one of my favorite romance authors of all time, Emily Henry, her release, her newest release came out in Book of the Month and I snatched that sucker up, snatch it up. This is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. It is a friends to lovers romance. It follows Alex and Poppy. Alex is definitely more rule following and not so on the adventurous side. He's a bookworm. And I just loved Alex so much. He was so warm and cuddly. And then Poppy, who is more adventurous, she actually, she's a blogger, a vacation blogger. So she goes on these vacations for her company and then writes about it and shares about it, about what all people should do when they travel to this location. And this jumped up to my top favorite romance of all time. And Alex and Poppy basically have been such good friends for over 10 years that they go on all these vacations together once every, or they go on a vacation together every single summer. And so you're kind of hopping back and forth in timelines. And then something happened two years ago in the book and we don't know what it is. And because of that, they haven't been in contact for a while. So you're trying to figure out what went wrong with them. And Poppy decides to reach out to Alex one last time because she knows that the last time she was really truly happy in her life was when Alex was in her life. And they decide, okay, we're gonna go on one more vacation together. You know when you're reading a book or seeing a moment in a movie and you see it happen and just all of the neurons in your brain that are for joy and happiness are just shooting so much that you just go, oh, that was me, this entire book. If you don't like warm hugs, you will not like this book. I loved this book so much. It was a blazing, easy five out of five stars. Please go read it. Please, 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 please go read it. I think there's only like one and a half scenes that you'd have to skip over if you don't like the steam, which skip over it because everything else is so worth it. This is so worth the read. Okay, that's all. Please go read it. The next book I read in April of 2021 was actually kind of an accident. So I had been hearing on all of these business podcasts that women should go and try to read The Woman Code. And I didn't actually listen very well to who the author was. And so I just searched it on my Scribd app and found this book and read it. And it's called, here's the full title, The Woman Code, 20 Powerful Life Strategies You Need to Navigate Today's Challenges. And I'll put the, or wherever, I don't know where, where I'm putting the titles this time since I have things here and things here. So this is by Sophia Nelson and essentially these codes that they're talking about, which I originally thought would be more so about, you know, navigating life as a woman and how to take care of your body and knowing your cycle and all of these things. Sorry, men, if you're listening, you can just like skip forward. 
that was not this book. This book was more so about sociology and how to interact with other women. And while it was very good, it was definitely not what I was thinking it would be. And I didn't completely agree with her on a lot of like theological points. So I gave it three, three and a half stars, three or three and a half stars, um, because she really tackled the topics of gossip well and conversations well and, and truly supporting other women and pushing yourself forward and navigating how to network with other women. So I, th I think she handled those topics really well, but uh, yeah, it was not what I was expecting it to be, which is kind of funny, but I wouldn't have read it otherwise. So I guess that's kind of nice. The next book I read is called Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. So Second First Impressions is about Ruthie and Teddy and Ruthie is kind of like a down to earth woman. I think she's specifically described as like an old lady in a young woman's body. Teddy is this motorcycle riding, he's got really long luscious locks, uh, kind of irresponsible guy. And so it doesn't seem like they would be a good pair. And this romance actually takes place on in a retirement villa, <laughs> which sounds really weird, but it totally works. I gave this book four stars. Basically, when they first meet, they don't hit it off very well. And so it's all about second first impressions, you know, re-meeting, re-attempting to have some sort of relationship. And there were just so many cute details about this book. The turtles that Ruth tries to save the old ladies in the book that they hire an assistant <laughs> just to try to get him to leave and quit. And so they hire Teddy in this and this is not making sense at all. All I'm trying to say is this is a really cute short and sweet romance that takes place in a retirement villa between an odd pairing that you wouldn't think would fall in love and then they do. And it was just so sweet. I loved it. I gave it four stars. Again, there's only one open door scene that you would have to skip over, but everything else is so worth it. The banter is so cute. I loved it and I love Sally Thorne and I can't wait to read more Sally Thorne. The next book I read in May of 2021 is called The Holdout by Graham Moore. This is a thriller. Basically, it follows a jury who 10 years before this had found a man not guilty of murder. And then 10 years later, a docu-series is being made about this jury and they are all coming back together and trying to rediscover if they all still truly believe if they made the right decision. The young woman that is murdered is allegedly, had allegedly been murdered by one of her teachers. And so you're just kind of following, you know, what their lives look like after being a part of a high profile murder case as a juror member. As this docu-series is coming out, one of the jurors actually ends up murdered. Dun, dun, dun. So that's really thrilling. I really enjoyed this mystery. I gave it five stars. I was actually on a jury last October. Reading this was really taking me back to the whole jury questioning time. Everything was so intriguing to me and the ending I really enjoyed. So I gave it five stars. And I'll insert some clips here of uh, my thoughts as I was reading it. First of all, love Graham Moore's writing in the first like five-ish chapters, six-ish chapters was bringing me like right back to my jury duty experience that I just had in October. It goes from each perspective of the 12 jurors and a, por a portion of their experience on uh, the jury duty. And so this one he talks about, he says, Rick took a seat. He observed the few dozen people waiting with him. He took in their clothes, their magazines, newspapers, puzzle books, and the occasional paperback thrillers. That's literally what it was like to walk in the room and see just a room full of my peers being there for jury duty. There's this other one, it says 20 minutes later, Rick realized he was in deep. He and eight other prospective jurors had been handed a black pen and a dozen page questionnaire. They were, there were hundreds of questions with the first, the very first one clued Rick in to the situation at hand. Like we were also handed uh, a packet, like a questionnaire when we walked in that we had to fill out. And it was like, that was the first clue as to what exactly the case was gonna be about. Mine wasn't like a whole high profile case. Like I definitely knew exactly what the case was gonna be about. So one of the other things that one of the jurors talked about is how 
Like it would have been so easy for him to lie and make it seem like he would have been partial one way or the other for the outcome. But he felt like within himself a duty to just answer honestly. And like I read that and it just like took me back to the room where I was being questioned as a juror. And it was just like, I, I had to stop and be like, okay, you're reading a book. Like you're not trying to be, <laughs> you're not putting yourself in the past. Just focus on the story. Okay, I'm back. To say that this is like the worst chapter I've ever read ever. Like this is just, ugh, I feel so gross. Like I know this is like supposed to be a psychological thriller. <sighs> I feel really icky. And legitimately because of that chapter, I don't know if I'd recommend this book. At least without a warning, like you need to know what you're gonna be reading because reading that, yeah, no, you need a warning for sure. Yeah. Sounds about right. That's kind of how I feel right now. So editing Hannah here to say that that scene that I was referencing in the last clip does not ruin the book for me. The story was still really good. And that scene just happened to be an important piece to the puzzle. It does not deter me from recommending it as a good mystery, but I do believe people should know what's inside a story before they read it in case they feel, I don't want people to feel blindsided when they read something like that, that I recommended to them and be like, why did you recommend that to me? So I just wanted to pop in and say that quick. The next book I read in May of 2021 is The Girl. I always mess this up. It's The Girl from Widow Hills, not The Woman. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. This is my first Megan Miranda book. She is a thriller writer. And this basically follows a woman who, as a young child, underwent a serious trauma of getting swept away in a storm and then was later rescued out of the drain. And so all the press from that event likes to follow her around. To escape all of that, she changed her name and moved to this small town. Well, then people from her past start to show up in her life again. And in fact, one of them ends up dead in her front yard. And she's also a sleepwalker. So there's all these little kind of intricate things to the mystery that you're trying to solve. And I actually had a reading vlog where you can see my thoughts reading it. So I'll link that down below. But I really did enjoy this thriller. At first I was a little bored, but it really started to pick up and I did end up giving it four stars. Really enjoyed the ending. So if you're looking for an audiobook to pass the time, I definitely recommend this one. And I'm actually gonna include the ninth book I read in the last quarter, the last book I read in May of 2021, which was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. It's about a woman named Hannah, which we love to see it. We love to see Hannah as a main character. And Hannah has a stepdaughter named Bailey who is 16. And they don't get along very well. So one day when her husband, Hannah's husband, Owen, goes missing and they have to try to solve the mystery behind it, they have to like band together. So it's kind of, it's, it's always cool to read about, you know, a mother-daughter relationship type situation. I gave this book three stars. I actually did a whole reading vlog on it, which should already be posted. And if it is, I will link it down below. I read this while Matt was away on a moving trip because my husband works for a moving company. And while it was very intriguing it definitely fell short to me in regards to should it be in the thriller category i don't know that could just be me in the thrillers i've read but i did really enjoy it there's no graphic content to be worried about there's really hardly any swearing that you would need to worry about so i actually partially listened to it and read it physically mostly read it physically but partially listened to it just to finish it in time for the reading vlog to go up all right and so that is the first nine out of 16 books that I read April through June. I'm going to put up a second video um, with the other books that I read because I just didn't want it to be too long. When videos are too long, it just doesn't keep everyone's attention as well. And I wanted to be able to give time to each of the books that I read and also be able to insert the clips of when I was actually reading it so you can get my real time thoughts. So. Stay tuned for the next video. I will be posting it hopefully in the next couple of days. If you like this video and want to see more from me, please feel free to subscribe and God willing, I will see you in the next video. Bye.